Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. In this video we're taking a look at what the value of i to the power of i is, where i is the complex or imaginary number the square root of minus 1. So just a reminder, i is equal to the square root of minus 1. It's not a real number, it's an imaginary number. So what's the power of i to the i? What is i to the i? Or i to the power of i, okay? So for this video, the only formula that we need to know is uh, Euler's relation uh, or Euler's identity or whatever you want to call it. And it goes, I've, I have done a video about this as well for the addition formula. And I'm sure I'll be doing many of these uh, videos in the future using this formula because it's very, very useful. But it basically states that e to the power of i times theta where theta is some angle in radians, it can be any number really, any real number there, is the i theta is identical to cos of theta plus i times sine of theta, just like that. That is Euler's identity. Okay, so why do we need to know this to calculate i to the power of i? Well, I'll tell you why. Because we can actually express just the number i in terms of theta, uh, or e to the i theta, where theta is going to be some number that we're going to um, assign here that's going to allow us to get i on one side. So basically, this is what I'm saying. Let's have a look at the right-hand side for a moment. How what, what value of theta could we put in to get like a multiple of i out on its own? Basically, we've got a cos theta, an i sine theta. I kind of just want the i sine theta bit to be there. I want it to be some number where, like basically, I want to choose a value for theta that doesn't make the sine term disappear. But I do want to make the cos term disappear because that's the real part. I'm basically just trying to find the value for which this is equal to um, just i on its own, on the right-hand side. So cos of what angle is 0? Okay, well, cos or we can try pi on 2. This must be in radians, remember. So cos of pi on 2, let's try it. Let's see what happens. So we can do e to the i. Let's, so we're letting theta be pi divided by 2. So e to the i pi over 2 is then um, equal to cos of pi on 2 plus i times sine of pi on 2, just like that, okay? So all we're doing is we're letting theta be pi on 2. And you'll see why we're doing that in a second. Because what will happen now is the cos term disappears and we're going to get an i on its own on the right-hand side. So e to the i theta, uh, or e to the i pi on 2 now, is equal to, well, cos of pi on 2, that's 0 because pi on 2 is 90 degrees. So it's cos of 90 degrees, which if you are unsure of what that is, Put it on a calculator. It is in, it's, it's indeed zero. So it's zero plus i times, okay, and then what's sine of pi on two? What's sine of 90 degrees? Well, it's just one. So it's i times one because sine of pi on two is one. So it's zero plus i. So that means that we can say that e to the i pi on two is just i. And this is a strange relationship in and of itself, right? Like e to the power of i times pi over two is i which is very strange, but it's true. So we have this. This is very helpful because what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the value of i to the power of i, but it's very difficult. Like, where do you even start? But if you can re rewrite i, what is, <laughs> I just drew some random line there. If you can rewrite i in a different way, it can be easier. So we can say that i, we've already written it technically, i is e to the i pi on 2, which means that if i is e to the i times pi over 2, that implies that i to the power of i is e to the i pi on 2, because that, that is i, in brackets, to the power of i, right? Because we're saying that i is e to the i pi on 2, so i to the i is e to the i pi on 2 to the i, right? And this is really nice because when you have this, like this is a this is a formula right here. Let's say we have some number, uh, we'll call it x. X is just some number, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, if we say x to the n, right, and then we put that in brackets and we raise it to the power of like m, this is just an index law. That is equal or identical to x to the power of n times m. So when you have something in brackets raised to a power, 
um, the powers multiply together. Okay, that's just like an index law. And we can use that information to say that then i to the i is equal to, using, using this right here, looking at the right hand side again, we can multiply the powers. So e to the i pi on 2 multiplied by i is, that's the same thing as i to the i. So i to the i is e to the i squared times pi on 2 because we're multiplying those two powers. So I'll, I'll actually do it in purple to just really show you guys. We're multiplying this value, this whole value, i pi on 2 and this i. We're timesing them together. And we get i pi on 2 times i. That's i times i times pi on 2, which is i squared times pi on 2. Okay, hope that step makes sense to you guys. Now what we can do is, by definition, what is i squared? i is the square root of minus 1. So I'll rewrite this, i to the i is equal to, if i is the square root of minus 1, then by definition, i squared is just minus 1, which means that i to the i is e to the power of, the i squared turns into a minus 1, so we get minus pi on 2, like that. And this is the value of i to the i, it's this. And I'll write down, I'll, also, I'll uh, superimpose the decimal expansion um, on there right now, so you can ask, like, see roughly what it is as a decimal. But this is the thing, this is what I find interesting about this result. i to the power of i is e to the minus pi on 2. But that's a real number. e to the power of minus pi on 2. There are no complex numbers in there anymore. They're all gone because the i squared just got rid of all of the complex numbers. So i, so an imaginary number to the power of an imaginary number is 100% real. It's a real number, and that's very, very strange. Um, and just if anyone was curious or if anyone knows this maths already, um, I understand that there are multiple values for i to the i. I've got it. Um, so you do, and maybe I'll talk about that in another video. There are actually an infinite number of values for i to the power of i, but we would call this the principal uh, value or the, the principal result, okay? So e to the minus pi on 2 is like the main one. But there are an infinitely many number of results, which is also really cool. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, thank you uh, for watching so much. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. Tell your family all about this. Um, you know, Christmas is coming, so, you know, you have a lot to talk about at the table. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found that as cool as I did, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.